Okay, 3b, again, you need to use the definitions for the trig functions, so SOHCAHTOA definitions you want to use for this. Uh, so first thing we have to do is draw the triangle, and we'll label it using the definition for sine. Now this one's different from A, because in A, they just went ahead and told you what, section, uh, what uh, quadrant you're in. However, this doesn't tell you that. We have to get that information based on the information provided, and we have to use our all students take calculus uh, sign chart for that one. So we need to figure out which quadrant the triangle is going to end up in. Now we're given that sine is a positive number, so sine is positive, and because I have less than zero, that means that tangent is going to have to be negative. So we want to find uh, the quadrant where sine is positive and tangent is negative. So if we do first quadrant, it won't be that one. If we do all students take calculus, all means everything's positive in the first quadrant. That's not the case here. Next one, we have students. S means sine is positive, everything else is negative. So this is actually the quadrant that's going to work because sine will be positive in the second quadrant. Everything else has to be negative, including tangent. So tangent has to be negative there. So we need to draw the triangle in the second quadrant this time. And when we draw it in the second quadrant, we're going to label the triangle based on the definition that's opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is 7, hypotenuse is 25. Once again, you're going to use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the missing side, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And now this time, the c is given to us as 25. That's opposite the right angle. So we put that in there for c. Uh, and then a and b, we have 7 squared plus b squared equals 25. This is 49. 49 plus b squared equals, this will be 625 when you square that. We're going to subtract 49 from both sides. When you subtract 49 from both sides, you're going to get 576. Square root both sides and you get b is equal to uh, 24. Okay, so 24 is the missing side and that's right here. Now, one thing about that right here that you want to make sure that you show, which I skipped that part here, but you want to make sure that you know that whenever you take the square root of something, you actually get plus or minus. And that's very, very important because when we put the answer here, we have to make sure we know whether it's positive or negative. Now because this is actually on the negative x-axis, got to remember to put a negative sign on that one. So it's very important to know which quadrant you're in and make sure the signs are correct based on that. The x value here would have to be negative again because it's in the second quadrant. That's going to affect your answers here. So to make sure that the first part is drawn correctly and all the, you have the correct signs. Now we're going to use the definitions to fill the rest of these in. Uh, so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent side would be here because this angle again is always measured from the closest x-axis. So your angle is there, which means you get negative 24 over 25 is your cosine. If you flip that, negative 25 over 24. Next you're going to do tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, negative 7 24 This would be negative 24 sevenths. Last one is cosecant. That's just going to be the reciprocal of the original one. 25 sevenths uh, is your answer there. So again, if it says find the exact value, you want to make sure you use fractions, don't use any decimals.